Russia could not support the Russian HIV strategy, the global HIV strategy. We now have a public strategy on uh, contradicting the spread of HIV infection till 2030. First and foremost, we focus on uh, access uh, to testing and uh, therapy and also access to prevention. We believe that our strategy is feasible and it uh, ought to be beneficial in our fight while we're combating this disease. Now let us get down to the key point. Now we can hear Masudara, the special representative of general director and the, the regional European. Let's, Masudara, the floor is yours. Вас не слышно. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Now the technical organizers will streamline our program. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Now let us get down to the first presentation and then the floor will be yours and we will keep working on it. Sorry. Natalia Ladne, the senior researcher of uh, the Institute of Epidemiology. Uh, it is dedicated to prevalence of uh, COVID-19 among HIV patients in Russia and influence of the COVID-19. Good afternoon, dear Mr. Chairman, dear colleagues. We're delighted to see you after this time period we, when we could not see one another in person. Now we can communicate with one another. Our session is dedicated to two topical issues related to our conference. Could you please show us the presentation of uh, the first speaker? And our presentation is dedicated to the research which was conducted in 2020. We studied prevalence of COVID-19 infection among HIV patients and the influence of the COVID-19 pandemic on medical service provision for HIV patients. It was conducted by several organizations. Here you can see the names of my co-authors. It is a comprehensive author group. They are representatives of a few organizations, the Central Institution of Epidemiology of the Rospotrepnadzor, and what it was also supported by Rospotrepnadzor and UNAIDS. I have already enumerated the objectives. There is also one optimistic divergency. Let me highlight that uh, we believed that uh, HIV patients would never be affected by COVID-19 because we uh, tried to treat the patients and we believe that there would be a viral competition about our hypothesis were not confirmed. It was an epidemiological research. When we analyzed epidemiological and clinical information, we collected data while carrying out anonymous surveys in the internet. This method was efficient, effective and safe. And we also wanted to get the information on the patients who were HIV infected. Not only did they refer to medical institutions, but they also referred to some other organizations. These publications were dedicated to hospitalized patients, but not all the patients with HIV were hospitalized. Still, they could suffer from COVID-19. Our patients with uh, um, our, uh, HIV, told us that they had suffered from uh, COVID-19 and then they uh, referred to our counselors and then we found out the information on COVID-19. And this study was conducted in 2020 and we also conducted statistic processing. That there were 15, 590 people who participated in it and 50, 590 people suffered from uh, HIV and 200 people, 262 uh, people were HIV negative. 
Some of our respondents have never participated in IHRV tests, but we excluded the data of the comprehensive analysis. And women prevailed in these three groups of the survey. It was uh, the fact that differed our sample from the population, because uh, normally men prevail in this group, in this uh, PLWH group, and of the PLWH were treated. First and foremost, we studied the impact of uh, COVID-19 on medical assistance. People were concerned with it. WHO and the UNAIDS were concerned with it, and our countries also were concerned, and they published some announcements and reports that addressed the patients. Still, we see that most of our respondents, I mean, respondents, I mean, over 70 percent didn't have any problems while receiving uh, antiviral drugs, and most of them were supplied at home. And, and I mean the employees of uh, NGOs and HIV centers, some of them mentioned some negative changes which uh, affected the work of uh, HIV centers, and some of them could not uh, take uh, these drugs, these uh, antiviral drugs, because they could not receive them in HIV centers. Sometimes the reserves only included uh, the number of drugs which was sufficient for one uh, for one month, and it was not sufficient. And some of them could not uh, take the drugs uh, against uh, tuberculosis because they didn't have access to them in the epidemiological centers. We also conducted the uh, study on uh, COVID-19. Those who were HIV neg um, negative, and some of them were tested for coronavirus infection compared to uh, PLWH. The odds ratio was uh, 2.8, and our kinds of studies were uh, also different. Our PLWH were tested in uh, PCR activities, and HIV negative people were tested for antibodies to HIV. Those who have undergone the tests for coronavirus, um, identified the markers of coronavirus in summer 2020, 23.5% of our surveyed people received positive results of the tests. There were much more people compared uh, to those who were HIV negative. The odds ratio was 4.7. The doctor has uh, diagnosed them with COVID-19 and they told that in 17% of cases, it's seven times more than the numbers among HIV negative patients. Some of them told them uh, that they, were, they suffered from it and that then they um, communicated this uh, to HIV centers. Experts who were treating HIV infections were not aware of uh, coronavirus infections in patients. The, the risk of uh, being infected with coronavirus was similar in terms of self-esteem. It was estimated as 5 out of 10. They could be infected with coronavirus, but HIV-positive people did not mention that uh, they used uh, different precautions and masks compared to HIV-negative patients. It means that they, they faced higher risks. The ones who lived with uh, HIV had some symptoms which were similar of COVID-19 symptoms. It was related to presence of comorbidities and concomitant diseases. They were often observed in HIV-negative people, and it is true. If uh, there were some symptoms reminding of COVID-19, Many patients with HIV did not uh, refer to medical institutions. They suffered from this disease at home. Some of them treated the COVID-19 infection on their own without addressing medical workers. Here we can see the characteristics of uh, the PWH, uh, PLWH, and their characteristics differed from the main group because uh, there were much more men in this group 
This corresponds to the data of the general population. People, are, men are often affected by COVID-19 infection. Some of them have been living with HIV for a long time, although the vast majority of them received antiretroviral therapy. Still, their immune system was uh, compromised. And some of these patients suffered with uh, immune deficiency, but it was not that severe in the majority of these people. Still, they were affected by COVID-19. We were also concerned with the fact that 41% of PW, uh, PLWH have undergone COVID-19, so could not tell uh, anything about their viral load during the last research. Thus, we are planning to conduct the second research in order to find out what it could mean, whether they had a viral load or not, or they did not uh, pay attention to it. Perhaps they do not understand these issues. As for the most common symptoms, we can see body temperature increase, loss of taste or smells, having analyzed the ways of uh, contagions, we understood that they were infected by their nearest and dearest, by their family members, partners, husbands, wives, and children. There are some limitations to this study because we can see the sample shift. There were more women involved in it. Maybe some people who haven't faced COVID-19 did not uh, participate in this study. Still, we should take precautions in order to eliminate or at least lessen the uh, sample shift. But here we can see the summary. Among the participants of our study, HIV people were more uh, affected to coronavirus infection compared to the HIV negative respondents. Most respondents who were PLWH did not have uh, such a lot of symptoms of COVID-19, but they were not often tested by, uh, for COVID-19, and they also rarely referred to, me uh, to medical institutions. HIV-negative patients uh, suffered from uh, different diseases of gastrointestinal tract and of kidneys. They could uh, um, cause some difficulties while diagnosing the disease. We can see the negative impact of the pandemic of coronavirus on medical assistance in HIV infection, but this impact was uh, not that significant compared to our expectations. One third of the respondents told us that uh, they had faced difficulties, but most respondents did not face these challenges. Um, the PLWH among respondents were primarily men, and they had been living with HIV for more than 10 years. They uh, took uh, ARNT, and uh, they did not have any severe immune deficiency, but uh, they did not feel that good uh, due to the long HIV status. The overwhelming majority had uh, the risk uh, of infection uh, due to a multitude of sources for infection of COVID-19 at the level of their close ones. Uh, there were more than uh, five to ten uh, uh, bodies of theirs uh, to have uh, COVID. So we have to recommend uh, the uh, improved measures uh, for prevention uh, and uh, vaccination first and foremost, as well as the uh, early diagnostics uh, for treating of COVID-19 for uh, HIV people. And so, with your regard to that conclusions, we would like uh, to once again repeat our tests, uh, thus providing a, a longevity for those uh, having COVID. I think the questions will be put in a written form. Or right away, uh, maybe you have some questions from the audience. Uh, just uh, one question, and the rest uh, will be uh, provided in a written form. Sorry, I can't hear the question. There is no microphone. 
Sorry, the question cannot be heard. There is no microphone. Uh, as uh, to our survey, we didn't have a chance uh, to study it, so we had to interview respondents live. But there were some uh, who passed away, and I did have a chance uh, to tell you about that. And our territorial centers for AIDS already have uh, some studies of that sort, and already we have a list of theses showing high mortality rate uh, from uh, COVID-19. Uh, those uh, who already have uh, uh, HIV. Uh, let me cite some numbers uh, for the pre ox federal okrug. These are absolute numbers, not the generated one. And uh, we've uh, been uh, collecting this data within our okrug, and uh, proceeding from that data, uh, we had uh, HIV uh, COVID. Uh, we had. 834 and outpatient uh, clinic. Uh, actually, uh, as to the clinic, uh, they had uh, more than uh, 12, 1200 had to undergo that particular treatment, uh, but uh, the mortality rate was pretty low, only 29 people. But these are our respondents, but uh, some of them never. Uh, ever resorted to the medical aid out of this list. Uh, Masoud Dara, and is it possible now to uh, communicate with uh, with him? A couple of minutes, yes, and there's the next uh, report to come. Mrs. Bileva, the senior fellow of uh, Rospetrebnazol knee epidemiology, and they are going to uh, dwell upon the status of the medical staff. Will you please download my presentation? Any problems with my presentation? Ah, uh, thank you so much, uh, dear colleagues, uh, esteemed uh, uh, guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to, to have a say here, and I would like to dwell upon uh, some uh, results of the survey on the peculiarities of the emotional state for medical staff and patients infected uh, with uh, HIV with regard uh, to COVID pandemic, uh, two waves of uh, pandemic. This is an emotional as well as a psychological problem. Uh, proceeding from that uh, um, premise, I would like to discuss uh, the results of our uh, studies. Uh, so who were the parties uh, to that research? Uh, the specialists of cybernetics, in, uh, informatics, infectionists, um, and we had to study the self-assessment uh, of the emotional status. And we had to address uh, certain questions uh, uh, to our respondents, uh, thus uh, uh, try Uh, which is inherent in the uh, with, uh, the disease anamnesis. And what was the first period for such survey? That was the May, uh, June uh, last year. And we had a questionnaire, had a vis-a-vis -vis interview, and there were two groups of respondents, medical staff, and the second group are those uh, patients with HIV, uh, which are uh, enlisted into our uh, special um, ward for epidemiology and the prevention of uh, HIV. Uh, the first group encompassed 67 people, mainly females, with a higher medical education uh, located in Moscow and in the Moscow region. And the majority used to be essential workers in the healthcare system. And the second group, the overwhelming majority, uh, was uh, were females. Uh, with the um, average age of uh, 38, and they had uh, the higher or uh, secondary education, and they had uh, like 10 years uh, of um, 
that disease uh, to be inherent and uh, who actually experienced the anxiety uh, first and foremost. Some said that I on a temporary basis have the anxiety. Some said that I have it on a permanent basis and some said that I do not have it at all. So let's have a look at this cross section of our patients. Sorry, at the profile of our patients. And uh, everything looks uh, more or less uh, fine. Uh, more than 50% have no anxiety. Uh, sometimes it is uh, 44, but the first group looks uh, different. Uh, they have uh, uh, that uh, feelings uh, by two times uh, as lower as opposed to the previous group. But we have the option on the right-hand side. And actually, mostly the medical workers experience that anxiety. And we had from this um, uh, score system from 0 to 10. And statistically, we have uh, quite a difference here. And uh, the first group showed six uh, scores, but the second uh, showed nine scores. And the respondents of the uh, uh, second group had uh, a higher indication indicator so uh, the group number one is um, uh, keen on the gymnastics on meditation on the reading on hobby and just uh, listening to music but uh, it somehow aligns our two groups uh, but if the medical workers uh, uh, statistically uh, resorted to communication to the support of the microsocial, but as to the second group at the level of the patient's group, uh, we didn't witness this practice. But as to the strategy uh, for um, adoption, they were more resorting to alcohol, uh, to smoking, uh, to uh, just uh, extra uh, food and uh, uh, religious um, as to the second group, they had religious practices. Uh, they tried to appeal uh, to the higher uh, force uh, in case they had some kind of an anxiety. Here we have uh, quite a large spectrum for identifying the strategy. I think uh, it was mostly a humanitarian approach, but nevertheless, we were also focused on the mechanism of uh, prevention of those diseases. Some actually use the uh, PPE, uh, thus minimizing their level of anxiety. But uh, if we resort uh, to the means of prevention, uh, to the PPE, uh, it anyway takes not a very significant role in the strategy. Thus, a person uh, may feel more comfortable, more calm, but uh, uh, not uh, within the first group or the second group. Uh, that result uh, got to be a predominating one. What were those preliminary conclusions uh, to be provided? So we realized uh, that the medical staff uh, uh, well identified uh, some some kind of vulnerability and sensitivity and uh, non-adaptive strategies. And they uh, didn't have uh, uh, really some uh, interrelation between the prevention measures and minimizing the level of the anxiety. Uh, we didn't see this link. And as to our patients, they actually ousted the anxiety feeling with due regard to the uh, COVID infection and also they had the deficit for communication, uh, which minimized the level of anxiety, and it is more related to the level of uh, stigmatization or to stigmatization in that group. And thus, it uh, was embedded in their emotional uh, feeling expression. But uh, the pandemic uh, is uh, uh, still continuing, and at the second stage of our survey, we interviewed the same group of patients, and that was the second period. Uh, October, November. And we had absolutely compatible groups for the longevity, for gender, for sex. And the only difference 
was that only 7% per, uh, of our respondents already underwent the uh, COVID-19 disease. We got absolutely the same instruments at our disposal and same methodology, but some um, said that they were subject to anxiety, some not, but there was no obvious dynamics visible. And But nevertheless, we had an option all, uh, all the time and always or pretty often. But uh, un upon the first interview, we didn't have such responses. As to the first group, uh, we had nine uh, scores, and for the second group, we had seven scores. And the results uh, for those uh, stati statistically significant uh, group uh, have become lower by uh, 0 0.2. And uh, what are those uh, statistics for the significant levels uh, for minimizing the anxiety level. And actually, we thought about the professional uh, skills um, uh, adaptation, but uh, but in the second survey, we didn't have it. Probably it was all due uh, to the problem of business and extra employment. And we are supposed uh, to somehow clarify it. And as to the religious uh, practices, uh, say they were also minimized. But uh, we had one new trait, the information on the um, mode for uh, the uh, uh, information to be provided uh, to uh, better uh, conditions uh, for a sleep. But as to the alcohol and smoking, these characteristics were still in place. So this is the dynamics as to how uh, to minimize the level of anxiety with due regard to the COVID infection. And so far, we haven't witnessed any dynamics of that sort. Uh, and uh, we do not have an understanding as how a person may behave himself and protect himself. Still, dear colleagues, we are tested. And in the second survey, we asked the following question to our respondents. We used the verbal incentive. We said coronavirus infection, and we asked our respondents to say the first words which stroke their minds. It is the association-related methodology. Interestingly, 25% of content was associated with the medical constituent of the problem. The problem is uh, associated with medicine. Still, the proportions are equal. I mean, prevention, the same. Masks, gloves, and uh, PPN is, and also the emotional constituent. Prevention and emotions had equal proportions. Still, these emotions were exclusively negative. Fear, anxiety, panic, overreaction, even death, and uh, irritability. It was an association-related experience. We see both prevention and emotions. Still, they are not interrelated. We should uh, find out where is the uh, connection between these two constituents? We should uh, find the cause and effect uh, link uh, here. I use PPE. I feel safe. I am calm because uh, there is the lower risk of being infected. It is an extra motivation to prevention, and we lack it. For this reason, we need communication. We will dwell upon it. In the future, we have published the results of uh, this research. You can read it in the fourth issue of uh, the magazine Epidemiology and Infectious Diseases, oh, topical issues. And we also read about dynamic of positive conditions in the second issue. Thank you, Valentina. It, it is uh, scientific research. Thank you very much. You will ask the questions in the written form. Hopefully, we will listen to Masudara. But now, let us 
ask our technical organizers to hear us. Still, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Rafael Gelevich, if you permit, let me speak at the end. So we have one more um, uh, talk I understood. I will listen to the last talk, and if you permit, I will speak afterwards. Поговорить. Prevalence of SARS-CoV-2, the pathogen. Dear colleagues, thank you for giving us a chance to present the results of our study, which was provided in the, at the end of May 2020 until the end of September. This study was conducted by the Epidemiologic Institution of the WHO. It was uh, conducted by four branches. The first uh, case of novel coronavirus infection was uh, registered on the 2nd of March 2020. As far as you know, determining the level of immunoglobulin G contributes to forecasting population immunity, and it allows us to arrange entire epidemic events. We can see the the different uh, groups of the population of Moscow. If you can see the number of people who had antibodies uh, to COVID-19, there were 22% Moscow in summer. 22 patients live with uh, HIV infection, and we decided to conduct a similar research in this population. We are going to assess the prevalence of COVID-19 in HIV patients and um, medical personnel who contacted, uh, contacted this group of people on the basis of identifying the pathogen of uh, SARS-CoV-2. The, the study was comprised of uh, two stages. Then, the, at first, the informed consent was signed, the bio, biomaterial was collected, and the questionnaires were filled in. Then we analyzed the samples. We examined 150 people. The medical personnel included 20 people who were diagnosed, who were examined for three weeks, and there were also 130 patients. Uh, women prevailed among the medical personnel, and men prevailed among patients. Here we can see the criteria of uh, participation in the study. They have to sign the informed consent. They should be over 18 years old. They also, uh, re um, also medical documents are required, and constant uh, contacts with HIV patients were also there. Was also the criteria of inclusion. The uh, criteria of exclusion were the age younger than 18 years of pregnancy and uh, non-compliance with uh, preparation for tests. Biomaterials, biosamples were collected of uh, the larynx and also the colon. Biomaterial was also collected for identifying specific antibodies of uh, G class. For this reason, we took serum. This slide represents the age of the participants in the study. Medical personnel was uh, 42 years old, approximately at least 29 years old, and 59 years old as a maximum. So HIV patients, the median age was uh, 36 years old, and the maximum was uh, 59 years old. The absolute SD4 lymphocytes values were higher in medical personnel. There were almost 1,200 cells, at least 2,500. As for HIV-infected patients, the median was uh, 639. And there were 
5,900 cells as a maximum. This slide represents the characteristics of HIV-infected patients with RLVT. All the women who participated in this study received ARVT, 31% of HIV-infected patients did not receive ARVT because they were recently diagnosed. The medical percent, uh, personnel also suffered from uh, con con uh, chronic diseases in 55% of cases, and 70% of them were men. The number of contacts over 14 days prior to the study is the following. We see that the medical personnel limited the number of contacts, whereas the HIV patients did not uh, limit their contacts. Thus, HIV men had more contacts than HIV women. Due to the risk of uh, COVID-19 spread, medical personnel in 90% of cases kept working out of home, complying with precautions. 35% of patients were locked down and 57% kept it working from home, complying with the precautions over the past of 14 days, 45% of medical personnel contacted uh, the people who suffered from uh, COVID-19, and 45% of the medical personnel did not suffer from any diseases. As for HIV patients, we see that uh, in 80% of cases, people did not uh, indicate of any diseases, or and some of them have suffered from acute uh, respiratory viral disease. Over the past three years, the medical personnel contacted people who were treated due to COVID-19. 60% suffered from uh, um, uh, acute viral disease, and uh, some of them have just come back from impoverished areas. Some of them contacted those who were treated. 22% had uh, suffered from acute respiratory diseases, and 6% uh, came back from epi epidemiologically unfavorable areas. M most of them did not suffer from any diseases, while identifying the pathogen of COVID-19 in uh, the smear out of the nose and out of the oral cavity. COVID-19 was identified in one case while examining medical workers, medical personnel. The pathogen of COVID-19 in smear out of the anus was not identified in any case. This slide shows the structure of HIV patients with uh, SARS-CoV-2. All the women with COVID-19 received ARVT. 40% of men did not receive ARVT. There were more than 300 of them. The presence of antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 Fed, um, five percent of medical personnel had them, and thirteen percent of HIV-infected people had antibodies. The frequency of uh, identifying ribonucleic acid of SARS-CoV-19 in the smear of the oral cavity or of the nose was of 4.6 percent. The presence of uh, Ig antibodies to SARS-CoV-2. Uh, in the group of HIV-infected people was 13%, and it was 5% in the group of medical personnel. These takeaways uh, show that we have to comply with uh, precautions in the study groups, and the results uh, indicated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. And uh, in the general population, uh, we had the statistics as of uh, May uh, 2020 by the end of uh, September. Thank you. Alexei Viktorovich, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, he's going to dwell upon uh, some uh, therapy and uh, cl clinical uh, process for uh, 
uh, HIV infected uh, plus uh, COVID infected people. And uh, uh, it's my honor and privilege uh, to greet you all here, just in person and not online. And probably uh, you've uh, followed the presentation of uh, Professor Longren, and it is very close uh, to the contents uh, of uh, his presentation. And indeed, it's worthy to mention that we talk about some conjugated infections uh, uh, for HIV and COVID-19, and it becomes quite clear uh, that uh, uh, for uh, people with cardiovascular system, uh, lung uh, problems, uh, diabetes, so these uh, diseases uh, tend to be uh, more severe. And uh, if you have HIV infection uh, at uh, um, uh, very uh, hard uh, stage, so you have some kind of an aggravation. And uh, some people uh, think that these data are not available in full. Uh, what about uh, the um, ATR therapy, where the, it uh, somehow uh, affects the disease per se? But uh, I AIT system uh, actually compensates the immune system and cells are suppressed and actually that's how it works and the situation is balanced. But the question arises whether it's worthwhile to uh, replace the therapy, but we're going to talk about it later. Let's just have a look uh, as uh, to how chronic diseases affect the um, hospitalization and uh, the hard um, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, infection implications, um, and that should be hypertension, diabetes, cardiac disease, and the chronic kidney disease. As to uh, HIV uh, infected, uh, um, uh, having this uh, uh, positive and uh, negative patients uh, in conditions of meta-analysis, uh, uh, the chances are by uh, uh, 1.9 uh, uh, times uh, are more vulnerable. But uh, as to uh, ATR, they are not always visible uh, by the medical staff. And actually, they may already become um, a part of this uh, disease treatment already in the hospital. And we have pulmonary tuberculosis masquerading as coronavirus disease 2019 in the HIV-infected individual with advanced immune uh, suppression. And in the monthly period, uh, we had the uh, ART um, break uh, due to lockdown. And what do we finally have? The uh, uh, COVID-19 already had uh, this infection uh, stated, but uh, it was, um, uh, he passed away. But uh, finally, the uh, coronavirus has uh, not been uh, actually confirmed. What are those antiviral uh, medications? Remdesivir, Maraviloc, Favipira, Vir, uh, ribavirin, uh, sofosvir, camostat. For many years, we have been activating it. Uh, Anti-parasitic, uh, uh, once uh, nitazoxidine, uh, ivermectin, and antibacterial ciprofloxacin and uh, uh, retroritin. But uh, we have some have come kind of a cautious attitude to this particular uh, drugs. But the Ministry for Healthcare already on a tenth time revising these methodological recommendations. So version number 10 uh, presupposes that Ramdesivir antiviral venpiravir uh, inhibitor for virus uh, RNA are in here. Uh, lopinavir is excluded as the uh, protease inhibitors, but uh, where do we use them? How do we administer them? Uh, we actually use some inhibitors for uh, coronavirus, and it was a very authoritative opinion of the Nobel Prize winners, uh, Professor Montagnier, 
who was awarded for this coronavirus uh, detection uh, methodology. And uh, we actually used uh, the interferon uh, beta ribavirin. And see, have a look at the dynamics of uh, this uh, disease with uh, valid uh, cytokine. And uh, the uh, red line uh, shows the uh, triple therapy. And there was an effect as of the six days. Six day, but it didn't affect to a large extent uh, the coronavirus. Uh, but uh, for uh, interferon with uh, ribavirin gives uh, quite a um, reasonable result. Omifenovir, it is also included in the list of recommendations uh, for uh, flu treatment in Russia, China, and CIS countries. But so far, we don't have uh, the clear cut survey on that score. Uh, score. Um, uh, it has the after trial um, a list uh, of uh, results and what ha have we seen uh, uh, by the end of the day uh, 406 were screened ran uh, randomized 400 and uh, as a result uh, 5VP right here uh, within seven days um showed uh, the, the distinctive difference as opposed to the standard medication which was administered for 10 days and uh, as to the uh, lethal um takeaway we haven't got uh, such uh, uh, survey the effect is in place but it's not so marked uh, we had 286 patients two thirds got parafiravir and one third got another therapy and uh, so uh, these are just out uh, patient clinics uh, surveys they were not hospitalized and as a result uh, the best clinical result was very visible for the seventh day and uh, the elimination of virus constituted 70% as opposed to 57% for the third day and 81 as opposed to the sixth day. And so uh, virus uh, worked uh, more uh, progressively uh, for filipiravir. Uh, chlorohin hydroxy in the Russian uh, really we still have it but the Americans excluded uh, it hundred percent and they had the, the standalone uh, survey uh, bring about a higher toxic effect uh, higher than the effic efficiency of the process azeotromycin this is the antibacterial um, uh, drug but it has also antihistamine effect but it doesn't have a clear advantage and it's compatible uh, with the list of previous uh, medications. And uh, we actually had non-nuclear uh, uh, inhibitors, uh, especially um, azithromycin and uh, holoxib. And it may bring about the cardiovascular problems, antibacterial therapy. And this is the last recommendations of the Ministry of Healthcare. And it says that the overwhelming majority of patients with COVID-19, specifically uh, when the disease is not uh, that hard, are not in a great need of antibacterial therapy. Uh, Remdesivir. Uh, we made uh, two serious research. Uh, and it was uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was the American survey. And uh, actually, we had the placebo group. And 11 days, uh, people uh, stayed uh, in the hospital uh, and uh, administered uh, remdesivir and 15 days for placebo. And uh, it was, uh, there were 159 patients, five uh, 39 treated with remdesivir, 521 for placebo. And uh, uh, the uh, actual Americans tend to say that it is the only uh, medication which uh, brings about some kind of an efficiency with regard uh, to the therapy. Uh, but, uh, um, 
genic therapy for COVID-19, toti li zumap, baricitinib, leron limap, and actually we have to be cautious as to this particular drugs as it minimizes the immune status and bring brings about the probability of bacterial infections and therefore we have to be really cautious in selecting these diseases as to the recommendations of the Ministry of Healthcare, uh, it is um, uh, uh, really uh, um, a very harmful uh, one for TB. And as to HIV infections, uh, we know that uh, TB tends to be the secondary infection to emerge. And once uh, this uh, drug is administered, uh, uh, it could be done uh, with your regard to 100% uh, exclusion of uh, TB emergence, and hereby uh, we could uh, we really have to think twice in selecting this particular medication. Uh, we uh, have NSAIDs which may cause ex increased AC2 receptor expression. However, this is no data in the patients for MERS, SARS, and COVID. But as to uh, mexitozolone and the methylprednisolone, it showed uh, quite um, distinctive results for HIV infected. Um, and how do we uh, combine? this uh, a uh, uh, anti -ret uh, retrovirus uh, medications and uh, this is the uh, Polish uh, experiment and uh, it is here on the site uh, www.covid19 uh, drug interaction org this is their site and uh, I have enlisted uh, uh, quite a number of uh, preparations uh, chlorohin uh, also on cmosicin and uh, the they are somehow conjugated some not and we have chlorophyll but we do not use it uh, this way and uh, uh, so azitromycin uh, chloroquine and uh, favipiravir remdesivir so uh, we have uh, to first um, identify uh, the efficiency with your regard to, to the um, electrocardiogram and uh, that uh, is the result uh, for the 1st of March 2021 for 85 patients uh, uh, for male 68 for fem uh, female 18 and uh, the average age is uh, about 40 and they had the IRT uh, therapy uh, for and uh, Actual all the patients uh, haven't yet identified RNA uh, for HIV, and they had the inhibitors uh, in if and uh, some uh, didn't use uh, this uh, IRT. They just uh, came to visit us uh, uh, as a part of their consultancy uh, services, and uh, actually these are patients uh, who. Um, uh, told us that they actually underwent um, through uh, COVID-19. They were included in that particular survey. And uh, what are those uh, conjugated or related uh, diseases? There's his hepatitis, uh, uh, pancreatitis, uh, and uh, creatitis, diabetes mellitus are concomitant disease diseases still there. Monitored the COVID-19 diagnosis. It is. Uh, Diagnosed in 45 patients with a positive PCR, for antibodies were diagnosed, uh, were identified in 45 people with IgG antibodies. It was based on CT. Still, it may be doubtful. The uh, moderate case was diagnosed in 22 people. Mild, the, the mild one was diagnosed in uh, 63 people and uh, two patients. Some of the patients did not uh, refer to the diseases, and then we diagnosed them when uh, no one has not done it yet. Still, we see such a significant difference in uh, registration of COVID-19 infection in the population, and more antibodies are identified compared to those who have suffered from COVID-19. Two patients have uh, suffered from COVID-19 twice in one uh, case it was mild in the second case it was moderate but both cases were confirmed they were confirmed by either PCR or antibodies here we can see the signs and symptoms 
There were no symptoms in nine cases. There were uh, mild symptoms in eight uh, cases. They couldn't be identified without any questionnaire. The body temperature rise was uh, like, um, identified in 63 patients. And there were also such uh, symptoms as uh, dyspnea, headache, laxity. Uh, and uh, CT was conducted in 38 patients. And there was uh, only one case when the lungs were compromised severely. They had the mild progression of COVID-19. There are nine patients in hospital. In some cases, there, uh, it was uh, moderate, and in two cases, it was mild. Without anti there were three patients without antiretroviral uh, therapy. There were 14 cells in one patient but he had uh, pneumocytic uh, pneumonia in history. Thus, these infections were observed. They got antibacterial therapy. It was in summer last year. And, and there were also such kinds of patients as anticoagulants and corticosteroids, and the ones who were uh, treated uh, out of hospital. We can see the same patients. Uh, two of them got remdesivir, and some uh, seven of them received uh, anticoagulants. Drug interactions are represented. You can see hydroxylurine, which uh, contributed to prolonging the QT interval. EFV was used with uh, azithromycin, but, and, but they did not interact. And uh, the adverse event related to heart rhythm was uh, observed, and there was also one patient with a mild progression, and no uh, coronavirus infection was diagnosed. This patient has uh, been diagnosed with HIV. Uh, he has been suffering from it uh, since 20, uh, 2000. He received two sovereign. The number of cells is uh, 690, and then CD4 cells. The load is not identifiable. So in September last year, the patient's wife was diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, the nasopharynx, uh, the lungs are compromised, and she was treated uh, at home. His uh, smear result is negative. I mean, in the patient himself. He uh, had a runny nose for two or three days, but he still could uh, smell everything. And he kept working all the time. A month later, in October, the patient und undertook the total blood count for antibodies. The level of uh, antibo uh, AG antibodies was higher. It was uh, two and a half uh, times higher. And it means that the patient has suffered the uh, asymptomatic COVID-19, we can also see the, uh, the uh, diminishment in uh, the CD4 cells, and the viral load was not identified four months later. The uh, cells recovered, but there was no viral load. There was no replication of the virus. In conclusion, let me highlight that uh, the progression of a s severe COVID-19 in HIV patients is higher than compared to the rest uh, population, I mean the patients with uh, HIV and uh, ARVT, and uh, some experts say that uh, the number of uh, the cells was minimal in the patients. The severe progression is uh, identified when comorbidities are diagnosed. The uh, death risk in uh, the HIV patients is comparable with the risk uh, with uh, the, of the general population of the patients with COVID-19. There is uh, no coronavirus in some patients. There is no um, data of uh, effectiveness of antiretroviral treatment for prevention and uh, treatment of COVID-19. Still, the patients received uh, the same RVT on the same regimen. It is uh, considerable. And it also depends on the, uh, the presence of uh, medical product interactions. Uh, this uh, 
study has uh, some specificity. If there were no lethal outcomes, some of the patients uh, okay, uh, did not uh, suffer from uh, severe uh, progression, and there were no concomitant diseases. Most of them received a RVT, and it was e efficient. Thank you for your attention. It was effective. Thank you for your attention. I will say there is one question. Well, let me identify that uh, whether most patients received inhibitor integrase. Is that true? Yes, we have approximately one third uh, of uh, integrase inhibitors and uh, a little bit more than a third, and the rest received uh, another kind of treatment. There was a lot of inhibitor integrase cases to observe uh, the, the, these patients uh, participate in clinical trials and it is comparable with dolotagravir our patients uh, receive the therapy on HIV infection they refer to us then we survey them and identify whether they suffer of it, uh, COVID-19 or not. Yes, this uh, sample is random. Thank you very much. The next presentation is um, uh, evaluating awareness of HIV patients about the COVID-19 prevention during the pandemic. It will be presented by Ulyana Kuimova. Please uh, stick to the time limit. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I will not take a lot of your time because I was asked not to do it. When we drafted our short study, I remember that our colleagues and I were in a hurry because it seemed to us that uh, it was about to finish and no one would be interested in it. So I exaggerate, still I did have similar thoughts, but we see that uh, this process in, is endless. I mean, the coronavirus infection, this uh, to theme is still topical, and the methods of uh, COVID-19 prevention are also topical. You can see them on this slide, the precautions and the methods of prevention of COVID-19 recommended by Ross Patrepnadzor, and our idea was uh, studying whether our HIV patients were aware of these rules or not, whether they managed to comply with them in real life or not. The objective of our work was uh, to study changes of um, concepts of uh, prevention of COVID-19 and scenarios of uh, prevention of uh, patients who are HIV infected while preventing COVID-19. We conducted a survey of uh, 160 patients. The, the visits of these patients were planned, and the visits were current. They participated in surveying. The questionnaire was uh, designed for this study, and it was voluntary. No one was compelled to participate in it. The patients agreed to participate in it. There were two stages of uh, surveying. We have already mentioned it, the beginning of the session. It was part of uh, the same project. We decided to carry out this survey in the first wave of the pandemic. And we conducted uh, this uh, study in May and June 2020. We questioned these patients. It was still topical because we still suffered from COVID-19. Then we repeated this work in October and in November, 81 people participated. In the second study, these groups are comfortable because there were 79 people in this study. Primarily men participated in this study because there were more men among respondents. And they outperformed women in both groups. They had higher education, our centers. I mean, young people, the age median was uh, 38 years old, and it was 40 years old in this second group. And the number of the respondents who have been affected by uh, 
COVID-19 was two in the first group, and there were six of them in the second group. And uh, the median of life expectancy with HIV was 10 years in the first group and nine and a half years in the second group. We were interested with uh, the methods of prevention of which our patients were aware. And we also wanted to find out which methods they used. And these indicating questions helped us of which uh, methods of prevention of COVID-19 are you aware is the first question. That's what we received as a result of this two-stage questionnaire. PPE were prevailing in both groups. There is no significant difference. It was the most uh, popular response. There were also some disinfecting means. They were not uh, that uh, mentioned to such an extent in the winter and in autumn still they were topical. The limitation of uh, cr crowd uh, visiting the crowd events, social distance and self-isolation. Let me dwell upon self-isolation. It was recommended to, um, to us, especially in summer and in spring. In 17% of cases said that self-isolation was uh, important, but this answer was not frequent, but they stopped uh, mentioning it later. There were only six of them later. This due to the fact that uh, it is statistically significant. We believe that young people prefer a healthy lifestyle. They are only 40 years old. They work in most cases. Perhaps it correlates with this answer. I will show in the next slide that they did not adhere to this method of prevention and they did not focus on it. Maybe they were not aware of it completely because we uh, started awareness. Enhancing the immunity system, the immune system was also related to methods of prevention of uh, COVID-19. It was also mentioned and uh, antiviral drugs were also mentioned in, in the first group. No one mentioned them, but uh, later on people started mentioning it. There were three people in this group. They believed that antiviral drugs could uh, contribute to protecting them, to pr uh, preventing them. In the course of the, question, uh, the questionnaire, some patients said that antiviral drugs could protect them. They believed in these drugs regardless of uh, the doctor's statements and the, the scientific publications. They were absolutely confident. Sometimes it should help because uh, it was uh, mentioned by those who ha had not suffered from COVID-19. Controlling the psycho-emotional condition and uh, the health condition was also mentioned in some cases, but no one mentioned sports and uh, walk, walking outdoors. Maybe it was related to limitations in summer and in spring because it was banned, but later on when the system was attenuated, the patients believed that it was necessary for protection. And the last one uh, is uh, other factors. There is a group of patients who believed that uh, no prevention methods could be used in some cases, in, in these cases. Although there, there, were lo there was lots of guidance given to the patients, they still believed that no methods would uh, be used by them because they were not aware of them. It may also be related to uh, insufficient information Maybe it, this information was not spread to everyone or it was not presented in a proper way. Maybe this reaction to the answer uh, to the question was negative because people were exhausted and they were protesting. It was the refusal and rejection of uh, the challenge. Still, let us focus on it. Let me remind you that uh, 
uh, we also decided to find out which methods of uh, prevention could be used by our patients, and they were used by these patients. Here are the answers we received for this question. We see that uh, PPE are commonly used, and they were increasingly used in winter and in autumn. They also mentioned hygiene, disinfectant means hygiene was not that common later. Still, the difference is insignificant. Um, disinfectant means are comparable. Uh, later, people start, uh, started to uh, uh, go into crowded areas, social distancing was uh, equal in both cases, in both groups. Here we can see the self-isolation. It is also uh, related to awareness, but uh, this uh, method became uh, twice less common. Maybe it is related to the fact that uh, some uh, restrictions were lifted in summer. People had more room and more freedom and more opportunities for leisure time. Some people started going to work instead of uh, working from home. And young age implies uh, ac various activities. Not all the young people can adhere to self-isolation, to lockdown in order to prevent the coronavirus infection. Enhancing the immune system was also similar. Still, they mentioned that uh, they um, um, enhance their immunity. And only one person mentioned sports and walking outdoors. And a small group of people said that they did not use any methods of prevention or used some other methods of prevention. In fact, it should be related to the psychological response, the avoidance of this topic, and uh, the fact that uh, people are, were exhausted while listening the uh, information about this problem. This is uh, uh, mentioned, um, and uh, it is related to the mood of people. Invariably, all these factors are important, such, uh, such factors as uh, awareness of the patients and the methods of uh, prevention they which they used. We would like to support our patients whom we have been managing for many years. And we also included the following question in the questionnaire. Which assistance would you like to receive in this case due to COVID-19 infection? Not all the patients answered this question. Some of them avoided that. Still, there was a response that uh, they did not need any help. Some people need financial uh, incentives because uh, people had some personal problems. Also, let me highlight that uh, a great deal of people needed medical assistance. Some of the responses were really important. They said, in case I'm, I um, fall ill, uh, in case I am infected, I would like to receive this and that. Some, well, some people were anxious about it, and there were not many patients who had a history of coronavirus. Some of them still suffer from it, but uh, at that time there were not many patients, and they were afraid of it, and they were afraid of uh, living without antiretroviral therapy. Sorry. Now, to sum up, let me accentuate that uh, we did not receive any uh, reliable um, and accurate differences while conducting surveying in two stages. Still low awareness of our patients in terms of coronavirus infection takes place. Uh, but we have to take into account the mere fact that not always uh, 
uh, we are familiar with the prevention methods and actively uh, we got consultancy on the vaccination issue and hereby we have to have a clear understanding as to what uh, our uh, target groups are and how to initiate a dialogue at their level. And I focus my attention on that as we have uh, an inquiry for providing the medical aid first and foremost. And so let's support our patients in such a, a painstaking period with some uh, minimum losses. I don't know why my presentation is not yet here. And uh, the last slide is uh, uh, he, here, um, but uh, we can do many things all together and not just alone. And uh, this is a teamwork, and I would like uh, to cordially thank my colleagues uh, in uh, the uh, participation in that particular work. Thank you for their kind, uh, for your kind attention, and you are very much involved and enthusiastically into that particular process. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting presentation of yours, uh, and uh, Ali Jan Salif is going to dwell upon uh, the situation in. Uh, Tajikistan Republic. He is the deputy director of uh, Go RC uh, Speed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues, uh, dear attendees to the conference, my presentation is not fully dedicated to to the uh, studies and uh, uh, surveys, but I'm going to dwell upon the uh, realistic um, situation on uh, the. Uh, uh, virus, um, uh, coronavirus situation, and uh, opposing the um, um, HIV uh, AIDS in the Republic of uh, Tajikistan. And it affected to a large extent uh, back in April the entire system of healthcare. And we do sense uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation onto the entire uh, situation with the uh, HIV AIDS. Uh, and we are abiding uh, by the ruling of all the declarations uh, identified here at the national level. Uh, as of 1997, uh, we've been adopting the national strategy on the uh, opposing of HIV and AIDS. And the seventh national program uh, was enacted uh, just uh, recently till the uh, period 2025. And uh, the key objective of the new program is uh, the conjugation with the international global um, uh, goals, and that is a part of the UN uh, program uh, for uh, combating HIV AIDS. Uh, that is what we had uh, as a statistic for testing for HIV in the Republic of Tajikistan 2016-2020. More than one million uh, had been tested uh, and um, it uh, has uh, a very wide spectrum uh, for testing, but due to the coronavirus and uh, d due to some uh, limitation measures in 2020, we had uh, uh, by 21 uh, percent uh, uh, less people than in the previous period. Uh, and uh, we actually had to identify the uh, HIV uh, and uh, by the new parameters we have uh, by 80 percent uh, less infections than in 2018. Uh, the level of uh, or the uh, factor for identification of those uh, tested uh, um, tends to be the same, uh, more or less, when it was 0.2 percent for country-wise. And with due regard to the international strategy, uh, Tajikistan is uh, building up uh, the material base uh, for uh, HIV uh, AIDS uh, uh, combating. And already we had some new cases identified in 2020. Uh, we covered uh, about 89% uh, uh, of uh, those infected. Uh, and uh, it was much more uh, than in the prior uh, period 
before the identification of uh, and discovery of H uh, of uh, COVID. We work in cohesion with a number of international organizations, and uh, quite a number of actions were undertaken uh, to uh, combat uh, HIV AIDS uh, plus COVID. And we had the hotline opened. Also, we uh, disseminated special uh, uh, drugs uh, within six months, as well as the psychological support and uh, online uh, Q&A. And all these actions uh, were aimed at the prevention of uh, COVID and also supporting patients at this level. Uh, those HIV AIDS infected. Uh, within that period of time, we also uh, provided uh, aid uh, to um, uh, our um, competitors abroad. And that was a mission of non commercial organizations plus the uh, Russian. Uh, organizations and thanks uh, to their aid, uh, uh, they were provided uh, specific treatment in some adjacent countries and it has become the routine practice. But within the period of uh, mass dissemination of coronavirus, uh, four mobile uh, comprehensive groups uh, were operating and uh, that was allocated uh, uh, by the Russian Federation and for those uh, labor migrants and their families. And we identified some suspicious cases uh, for COVID and then they were relocated to a specific uh, uh, hospital and within uh, a short period of time they were provided with PPE, some information and their uh, educational uh, documents and also there was a, a special uh, undertake. Uh, we undertook special actions in order to reach those who uh, were located on a remote basis in conditions of 100% lockdown, and uh, neighbors uh, within. Uh, a certain period of time couldn't see even their neighbors, but out of the blue, uh, we had uh, the clinic deployed in that remote conditions with all the medical equipment, with all the specialists, with all types of medical staff, and these uh, services were provided uh, to a number of households in remote areas. Uh, thanks to the active uh, ac uh, performance of the mobile clinics, uh, we managed to uh, attain all the goals and objectives uh, and uh, within uh, a specific period of time, uh, 29 cases of the coronavirus infection um, were identified along with uh, HIV AIDS. A page, uh, at the level of HIV AIDS patients. Also, some uh, preventive uh, measures and programs were undertaken, and uh, this uh, particular slide uh, presents the uh, all these uh, specific um, uh, uh, actions uh, like uh, uh, syringes uh, dissemination, also some uh, 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 condoms and uh, other. Uh, actions and uh, due to the uh, specific measures uh, which were uh, undertaken on time, we managed to prevent uh, and suppress uh, the uh, viral load uh, at the level of the patients um, um, HIV AIDS uh, infected. And uh, actually, in percentage, uh, we had uh, 68 uh, for 2020 for the second 90 percent presupposed 84 and the third presupposed 86 and uh, that level has been attained by us uh, for the first time and uh, quite a number of uh, surveys uh, were provided, thus supported by the government of the Russian Federation. And hereby I would like uh, to show uh, some results. Uh, originally, uh, we had to uh, identify the prevalence, the awareness level, uh, the bio uh, behavioral uh, study, uh, 3,500 uh, 3, uh, um, uh, migrants were covered by this survey within the period of 1549, also at the level of convicts, and uh, also we had to test the awareness uh, level uh, and uh, 
uh, within the same age category, 15, 49. And we also had to uh, take the comprehensive analysis and uh, for my medical, biological, and social demographic factors, and uh, uh, the, and also being keen on the TB prevalence. Uh, finally, uh, HIV constitutes uh, 0.4. Uh, for syphilis, it is uh, 0.2, and uh, for uh, hepatitis, it's uh, 0.8 percent. And as of 2013, uh, and uh, versus 2020, the dynamics uh, is still the same. And uh, how uh, the condoms are being uh, disseminated, we have a percentage here, and that is 53 uh, percent for that particular group of the population, uh, and uh, uh, we have the prevalence uh, zero for HIV uh, 3.1, for syphilis it's a uh, three uh, zero, and uh, for uh, VGS it's 9.8. But normally we detected these cases uh, in uh, some uh, uh, institutions, um, um, uh, for con uh, for um, imprisonment and convicts, and that is the level of uh, condoms uh, uh, application uh, with uh, uh, for the last uh, um, uh, sexual contact uh, with the not uh, uh, regular partner, and that is uh, what we have for HIV at the level of fifteen forty nine over the past five years, and uh, the data says that uh, we have uh, fifty percent. Uh, Uh, statistics uh, and they're uh, correlated uh, with uh, the data of the routine uh, medical um, examination within the five year period. So, how do we oppose uh, uh, HIV uh, AIDS uh, prevalence in the period of pandemics? Of course, we have some challenges to face, but as of today, uh, the most challenging is the uh, insufficiency of the system for uh, providing uh, tests and uh, drugs uh, at uh, the very acute period uh, once we have some complications to occur. For example, a COVID-19 pandemics. And uh, in the past, uh, we had uh, quite uh, um, good um, uh, reserve for the uh, IRE medications, and they were sufficient uh, for three months period, and that's how we combated the prevalence uh, of the disease. And depending on the situation, depending on the transit of tests, depending on the producers uh, of various drugs, we came across the situation that uh, for Tajikistan, it is uh, really hard uh, to get an access uh, uh, to the uh, heart to the larger batches uh, of those uh, drugs, uh, and we uh, minor size batches never arrive, only large size, and that was uh, really another complication and challenge for us for 2021. And also, we have the insufficient development of the coordinative mechanisms for opposing the HIV/AIDS uh, epidemics. So what are those recommendations to take into account uh, to use the acquired experience in the period of uh, pandemics uh, for the uh, addressing of uh, the problems with the involvement and retaining patients for ART. Also, we provide uh, uh, some uh, cross-border projects and programs for opposing the HIV infections prevalence. Also, we have to streamline the efficient exchange um, of some specific um, information between the countries for the efficient uh, combating of HIV infection, and also uh, we have to introduce some per, uh, pertinent mechanisms for providing services with regard to HIV infection for CIS countries and uh, in uh, in the um, areas of their temporary uh, location. Um, and also, we have uh, to retain the patents, uh, the patients uh, for, upon HTR uh, 
uh, drugs. And I would like to express my gratitude uh, to those who provided uh, support and aid to us. These are our partners and organizations. They were with us uh, uh, no matter how hard it was uh, in conditions of uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, pandemic prevalence, and altogether we may uh, be uh, more successful in our efforts. Alim John, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for your very interesting presentation. And uh, always, it's my own privilege here to follow your presentation. Let me somehow deviate uh, from the subject matter of our discussion. I've just. Uh, um, hired uh, for the center of uh, AIDS in Tajikistan, a young uh, person, and he was so persistent uh, uh, to be a part of this endeavor. And we have another very interesting uh, presentation to come. That is Volova Ludmila Yurevna for HIV infection uh, and uh, challenges and how to address these challenges. It was changed. It was modified for help in the COVID-19 patients. Mila, the floor is yours. We cannot hear you. Sorry. People, listen to us. Let us uh, express our gratitude on behalf of those who are related to PLWH group in Tajikistan. It is sad that uh, the broadcast was switched off and that it took place till one hour, 1 a.m. And now we can just listen to ourselves and we can see ourselves. We cannot hear you. Unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Mila, thank you. Mila, can you hear you? We cannot hear you. It's dear technical organizers. Let us listen to Mr. Darrow, this case. We will be able to contact him. We can't hear you. And I want to hear what this is. It's OK. Should I speak? Or should we wait for Lugna? So I'm happy also to speak. I think we had a very, very good um, session with very rich uh, presentation. I hope also you can hear from the chief specialist soon. Um, I think one thing I would like to start with is that medicine is an ever-changing science. That's a lesson learned that we have. We are living in a pandemic situation with 140 million people uh, being infected. Uh, and also more than 3 million people, unfortunately, have lost their lives. Um, and also, as you know, uh, we have uh, tools available, which is you know, physical distancing, but also uh, uh, hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, awareness of the population, and following the public health measures. We also have a health system who needs to cater those severe cases and put them in hospital and take good care of, uh, of them. Um, and science talks, numbers talks, and very important to find the most um, efficient uh, treatment. Obviously, there are lots of uh, work ongoing in terms of finding the best antivirals, as you are there. And we have also, through WHO, done the solidarity trial, which is uh, more than 12,000 severe COVID-19 uh, patients who were on treatment, randomly uh, uh, categorized in different categories. Um, in uh, uh, more than 500 hospitals, 30 countries. And we find out that uh, many of the antivirals uh, that we were thinking they have effects, they did not show uh, effects on severe cases. 
Maybe they have other effects, but uh, that's something that needs to still be uh, figured out. The other message that I take is that the health systems and health needs to be prioritized by all population. Um, and particularly important for um, HIV uh, response, because we know that people who are um, receiving antiretrovirals and who have a good CD4 count, and these people uh, basically can also have a better response. So very important to, con to continue having infection prevention control and talking to the population, also mental health, as colleagues, uh, previous speakers mentioned, and also adapting the services to the pandemic situation. I think Russian Federation and other countries also have shown experiences how you can adapt the services to the pandemic situation. If you don't need, need you know, every month, one month, uh, one time per month to come, maybe you can do three months, four months delivery of the treatment to serve to people. So there is no interruption and people are not afraid to get their treatment. Uh, and last but not least, I think the message that I have is the, the solidarity, that we need to work together internationally. Cooperation between the countries are crucial and within countries among different experts, virologists, epidemiologists, infection disease specialists, uh, health system, primary care. They need to all of us work together uh, with the governments to make sure that we come out of the pandemic and uh, overcome this situation. With those messages, I would like to thank the organizers for a very good uh, session. I hope we can also hear from uh, from the chief specialist at the end. Back to you, Rafael. Over. Thank you for great comments. Thank you. It is related to both coronavirus infection, but also to combat uh, and it's also related to combating the HIV infection and we will achieve it. We are committed to making that happen. Sorry, now I should leave you and uh, we have one presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rafael, thank you. Please uh, stay well and take care. The next event will take place and now we would like to listen to Ludmila. The experience of uh, this region is uh, vast in terms of uh, helping the patients with HIV and with uh, COVID-19. We're listening to you, Ludmila. Dear colleagues, dear Natalia, I am delighted to participate in this conference online. Let me dwell upon the situation which took place in 2020 in Yamal. There was the AIDS service in Yamal, and we had to focus on the issues associated with the pandemic of the novel coronavirus infection. When the first cases of novel COVID infection were registered, we started arranging our work in Yamal jointly with the, the Department of Healthcare, the Department of Rospartrip Nadzor, we, um, the governor has uh, drafted the resolution about, again, in terms of uh, sanitary and epidemiological activities in order to prevent the propagation of uh, novel coronavirus infection in the district. We also elaborated uh, on issues of uh, staff training aimed at uh, timely identification and the prevention of uh, coronavirus infection propagation and there were also some activities aimed at uh, the patients with uh, respiratory infections. Some of the people were working within the system of uh, oil and gas production at our enterprises and they arrived from China we have been observing them for 14 days. We have been monitoring them. And we also started creating our computer software related to coronavirus, uh, coronavirus and it, uh, our analytical programs were based on it. A few days later, we faced the ones who have uh, contacted the patients with COVID-19. A train from Moscow arrived here to Novy Uringoy. It included 
on uh, patient with uh, novel coronavirus cases. This person came back from Kirov, and uh, the ones who contacted them were referred to the place of residence in uh, Nova Orenkoy. There were 49 passengers. Uh, and uh, novel coronavirus was not uh, uh, identified in any of them, but uh, this contributed to arranging similar events. In real work, the following group of population, which uh, was monitored by us, and uh, we prevented them from COVID-19, was the group of people who has just arrived from uh, abroad. In February and in March, many people came back after vacation. First and foremost, they came back from Thailand, the Arabic Emirates, Vietnam, the CIS countries, Dominicana, Congo, to name a few. They came back to Yamal, and uh, medical surveillance was organized for them they were monitored. The ones who contacted uh, people with uh, coronavirus were paid special attention. We focused on epidemiology of uh, infectious diseases in Yamal. I mean, HIV infection. The rotation expedition method was applied. 1,000 people arrives in Yamal and 1,000 people leave it annually. And our population is a little bit more than 500,000 people. All the enterprises which use uh, rotation expedition methods were involved in this anti-epidemic activities. The um, governor of our district issued a ruling, number 60, in the course uh, within the framework of which all the, employee, all the employers had to test all the people who have just arrived for coronavirus. The observation was also provided on the basis of the organization, and uh, these rules were fulfilled. All of them were monitored for 14 days, unless the HIV infection was uh, identified. And uh, if, uh, unless of the pathogen was identified in them, they came to oil field and kept working there. And the ones who were diagnosed with COVID-19 were um, admitted to in-house depart uh, departments of our medical institutions. We can see the decline of the registration of the cases of novel coronavirus infections in the workers who work in this uh, rotation method. This work was expedient and it allowed us to reduce the spread of uh, coronavirus infection in Yamal still, given all these uh, processes, COVID-19 has penetrated into our district. This has happened over the first months of the pandemic. The workers of uh, rotation method ha have been diagnosed with uh, COVID-19, and then the disease penetrated into all the groups of population. We did our utmost to admit to all the uh, infected people to hospitals regardless of uh, any documents, then when the statistics increased and uh, we, when we considered the severity, uh, we started uh, admitted the patients with uh, severe and uh, moderate cases. It, the the centers were deployed in remote and hard to reach regions, which may be there, which might be reached by helicopters. And some of the organizations were also designed for combating coronavirus, including the aid center. 
and some other hospitals. The, uh, you're here on the slide, you can see the changes in the hospitalized people. Mild forms uh, of the disease uh, were observed in the first months. By October and December, the case of uh, severe and extremely severe cases of the disease has increased drastically. It was uh, the substantive load on the healthcare system of Yamal, and it corresponded with uh, the number of patients on mechanical ventilation of lungs. I will not focus on it, dear colleagues, still. We could see high indicators of uh, morbidity in the workers of uh, the rotation method in both first and second waves, uh, waves of the coronavirus infection. The adults primarily suffered from it. Over 80% were there in the first wave and approximately 77% in the second wave. Uh, children and uh, aged people after 65. And uh, the structure of uh, treated uh, in the hospital uh, patients uh, testifies to the fact that uh, we've uh, uh, tried uh, to put everybody uh, uh, in the hospital first and foremost within the first months, uh, and uh, they were dispatched uh, from uh, the uh, fields. And uh, in April and in May, uh, we had a very uh, tense uh, situation for oil and gas um, uh, fields. Uh, and uh, we went on improving our statistics. Uh, and in addition to the federal register, uh, we uh, elaborated a sp special program, regional program uh, for combating uh, coronavirus uh, upon the uh, gravity uh, stage. And also we had to identify the status of a patient and uh, results uh, of the medical examination. With due regard to the order of the Department of Health Care on the basis of our center, for two times uh, we had to deploy the hospital. Uh, first it was in March and then in October uh, we did the same thing. And uh, we also had some a few weeks uh, uh, of uh, in a break, and then we again came across the situation uh, of the new wave uh, when the, we by two times had more cases of COVID than in the previous uh, uh, period. And so we actually retained the conditions uh, for HIV and AIDS infected. We had to uh, somehow uh, reconvert uh, the uh, activity of our hospital, but uh, not a single medical uh, uh, employee uh, had been infected. But that was all due to uh, the um, uh, situation of uh, prevention and uh, as to the lab diagnostics. it has been organized on the basis of those uh, uh, labs dealing with uh, HIV infections. And due to this uh, fact, we've managed to uh, had quite a number of those uh, tested. And we were always placed first as to the number of tested. and. Uh, It enabled us, to a large extent, to manage uh, and control this infectious uh, disease. And uh, we used uh, some methodological recommendations of the Ministry of Health Care. And uh, to a large extent, uh, we've uh, been uh, focusing on the uh, patients uh, of the uh, which were just locals mostly, and that was the 17 percent altogether. And also, we had this uh, early diagnostics uh, to implement. Uh, 
And Alexey Viktorovich already told us in more detail as how we uh, administered the various services. That was uh, the um, uh, special uh, re uh, recovery aid and uh, the municipal um, entities. We had uh, 23 labs uh, and uh, 1.5 million tests uh, were altogether provided. And actually, each uh, uh, employee of the Yamal Peninsula was tested at least three times. And uh, the um, minister, local minister for healthcare and the governor uh, were very much focused on this uh, particular effort as the situation has been changing and uh, it was discussed at the senior level, at the level of um, uh, policy makers and uh, originally we had lack of equipment, lack of uh, PPE and unprecedentedly in the 17 uh, municipal entities uh, uh, we managed to install the uh, three uh, computer tomography and uh, magnetic resonance tomography. And we started constructing in the new Orengoy and Selihard uh, two new hospitals. And altogether, the situation nowadays uh, has been uh, stabilized and it's going to be our. Um, extra uh, value to have uh, this equipment installed. As to the uh, um, medical staff infected in the overall structure, it was just 6% of them altogether. And they were infected in the medical institutions and uh, within the family. And I should say that medical institutions uh, had only half uh, of this number, just 3%. Uh, as to the structure of these infections uh, which have been acquired uh, uh, on the job, so the infections were registered immediately and it uh, by the tests in the lab but not so many were registered at the level of uh, hospitals. As to hospitals, uh, COVID-19 uh, was registered at the level of 80 percent and only 20 uh, is the share of the hospital staff. And uh, we vaccinated about 10.5 uh, percent and uh, uh, 7.2 had been completed, and uh, we also uh, vaccinate uh, HIV uh, deceased. There is a 3.4 percent of deceased. Uh, finally, we got 2.9 as the final statistics. Uh, the governor of the Yamal Peninsula visited us and uh, we got together with the employees. That was a very moral support and he uh, actually managed to step into the red zone and uh, quite courageously and he talked with our patients and uh, he heard the responses um, uh, right from the horse's mouth and that was really in absolutely indispensable for our team. A couple of comments on the HIV infections. Uh, we had actually to get in touch with Ludmila. We cannot uh, extend our lecture. Uh, sorry, Ludmila Yurievna, uh, we exceeded our time limit and uh, we cannot uh, just uh, follow your uh, lecture further. Uh, we are still uh, working on uh, testing HIV uh, patients. We have a set of organizational documents uh, for the, and the list of uh, therapeutic measures and also 95 percent uh, were uh, examined and 19.6 uh, were covered uh, by the treatment and uh, we had the efficiency for 2019 which is uh, about 90 uh, percent. I'm really grateful uh, to everybody 
to AIDS service that within the period of pandemics we've managed to ensure uh, everybody with the antiviral uh, medication and also uh, complied uh, uh, with the ruling of the federal registers and also we have quite a storage of antiviral uh, drugs and we also had uh, the um, uh, monthly patronage of our patients uh, in-house and uh, we had mobile uh, a, a teams and uh, we are very cautious as uh, to the patient uh, with HIV and uh, it uh, really showed that the mortality rate uh, from uh, AIDS in 2020 has become a lower uh, by two times uh, versus uh, 2019 and uh, the only provision of our strategy which was not yet completed is uh, the coverage for medical uh, uh, examination for HIV that was 29 versus 34 in uh, 2019 and in 2020 uh, it allowed us uh, to very actively uh, uh, identify at the early stage HIV infections and we do realize that uh, we may come across the uncontrolled prevalence of uh, HIV. We had some problems with uh, uh, HIV dissidents, uh, but it is another subject matter for discussion. Uh, so we really have to terminate our uh, presentation. And uh, really, we had to be keen as to the uh, court cases, and that's it. And uh, in conditions of the pandemic, we've managed to arrange uh, surveillance and uh, reporting for uh, HIV and AIDS. And out of uh, 17,000 uh, treated, the uh, all 70% is the share of the okrog uh, and uh, the rest were um, just those uh, newcomers but HIV patients from other regions uh, uh, were not left without our attention thank you very much for your kind attention and I would like to thank my colleagues uh, first and foremost for their stamina, uh, for their courage, for their braveness, and to the government of our Okrug and the Department of uh, the Healthcare for moral and material support. Thank you once again, Ludmila Yurievna, and I'm so uh, thankful to all the attendees to that conference for your patience and uh, for the reporters. We had uh, seven presentations within an hour and a half. Uh, please uh, come to visit us uh, for the next uh, uh, section, which will be dedicated to migration.